Hello again, and thanks for watching another video in our client education series. Today, I want to talk about the major factors that affect the cost of a kitchen remodel and ways that you can make smart decisions to get the best results out of your own project. So let's get started. The first thing to consider is the layout of your existing kitchen. The reason why this is the top of our list is that the moment that you start significantly changing your layout is the moment your project goes from a lipstick remodel to a major renovation. Items like moving walls, windows, ranges, sinks, and cabinets carry a lot of cascading effects that will greatly impact the cost of your project. At this point, you're likely starting from scratch and building a new kitchen, plus incorporating any structural changes. Structural changes always mean a permit, planning, delays, waiting for inspectors, and could involve engineers as well. At Cabinet Painting Vancouver, we specialize in remodels that make the most of your existing layout and our average job cost is somewhere in the twenty dollars to $25,000 range. But we also know many contractors in the local area that love completely gutting a space, and their projects are often in the seventy dollars to $200,000 range. It's also entirely possible to build a kitchen that comes in higher than that price point. But we can do a lot to make an existing layout more functional. We can add, modify, or move cabinets, increase countertop space, Add an island, make room for larger appliances, incorporate appliances into cabinets, or even offer better interior storage solutions for clients. The reason we offer all of this is because if a client can keep their existing layout but make it more functional, they can save massively on their project cost and also greatly decrease the time required for the renovation, while still getting the look, feel, and function of a new kitchen. Our most simple remodel, which includes refinishing a client's cabinet, installing new countertops, a new backsplash, and sink and faucet, can be done in as little as two weeks. But a full kitchen renovation with all the accompanying plans, permits, and construction can take three to six months or more. Next, I'll talk about cabinetry and the options there, as it will be one of the biggest ticket items in your renovation. There are great ways to save on this cost and also some pitfalls to avoid. The two biggest ways to save on your cabinet costs are to keep your existing cabinets and layout, but give them a quality facelift by either refinishing or refacing your cabinets. If you wanna learn more about these options and which is right for you, check out our other video called Refinishing versus Refacing. Now there's a lot that we can do to save cabinets from the landfill and save the budget of your renovation. As long as the cabinet carcasses are in decent shape, you can replace the cabinet doors for a completely new look. And as mentioned before, there are other cabinet upgrades we can do as well, like soft close hinges, new pull-out drawers, or even a new pantry cabinet. There are even some companies that will build custom interior organizers for your cabinets if they don't fit a standard-sized interior solution. Just to give you a quick appreciation for the difference in cost when refinishing your cabinets versus replacing them with new ones, I'll give you an example from our experience. Because we also offer new cabinets in addition to refinished cabinets, we have priced out both options for clients that are considering which way to go. Where a kitchen that is completely remodeled but starts with refinished cabinets may come in around $25,000, the exact same kitchen remodel but with new cabinets can come in around $50,000 or more, depending on the cabinet finishes chosen. So you can see how even a basic kitchen remodel can benefit massively from how you decide to tackle the cabinet question. And just in case you plan to sell your home in the near future, keep this in mind. It's said that a full gut and remodel of your kitchen may return you about 80% of your initial investment when it comes time to sell. So if you spend $100,000, you might get $80,000 back upon sale. But what if you only spent $30,000 but got the same aesthetic wow factor out of your investment? Well, instead of losing $20,000 when it's time to sell, you've actually made $50,000. And that can go a long way to paying those pesky realtor fees. Now, if you do have to replace your cabinets, then there are some good things to keep in mind. I get a lot of insight from rehabbing old kitchens. I get to see the patterns of wear after 10 to 20 years of use, and I see where the cabinets have issues. What I see most when going into older kitchens are failure of the drawer hardware, water damage, and failures of the finish. While no finish lasts forever, 
the drawer hardware and water damage can be mitigated. If you're going for new cabinets, plywood boxes will be a great upgrade versus particle board. The reason is that the material is much more resistant to water and a more solid surface to screw into. And what happens with drawer failures is often the screws strip right out of the particle board cabinets due to the constant weight and movement in the drawers. And should particle board cabinets get badly damaged by water, they will swell and need replacement, which can be a huge headache. Our cabinet supplier offers an upgrade to plywood for as little as about $35 per cabinet, so it won't break the bank. Now, if you can't spring for plywood boxes, at least make sure that all of your cabinet boxes are made of three quarter inch thick material instead of five eighths. This gives a thicker cabinet wall for the screws to bite into and they're less likely to fail over time. Finishes of your doors and cabinets are where you can spend a boatload of money or save a pretty penny. If you wanna get maximum aesthetic bang for your buck and good durability, you can go with a laminate material on your doors and cabinets. It'll look great, have good durability, and be one of the lower cost options. At the higher end of the scale are a painted finish or wood veneers. Now, nothing matches the look or feel of these options, but they can double your millwork costs. A wood veneer is a thin layer of real wood applied to the exteriors of your cabinets. Keep in mind that laminates now can come very close to approximating the look of real wood and will have better durability and a much lower price. A painted finish, on the other hand, is unmatched in the look and feel of the finish. It gives you a full range of color and sheen options, as well as having great durability, but will definitely be a premium price. Another area to save money when doing new cabinets is to have less drawer cabinets. I know, they're all the rage in new kitchens, but a drawer cabinet costs more than double a door cabinet, so limiting those to only what you need will save on costs. One other popular trend is to have floating shelves in place of upper cabinets. Just keep in mind that these shelves will be quite a bit more expensive than upper cabinets that just have doors and don't have anywhere near the weight capacity or storage space. Now there are three upgrades I always suggest to clients when I'm doing new cabinets or adding to their existing kitchen. The first is a tall pantry cabinet with pull-out drawers if space allows. This is because if you have shelves in those 24 inch deep cabinets, things go in the back to be forgotten about until they're years past their ex expiration date. If you have pullouts, you can easily see and access everything that you have. And hey, you know that awkward cabinet above your fridge? That's actually the perfect place to put some vertical dividers inside the cabinet and store all of your cookie sheets. I find that no kitchen has a good solution for this and a lot of new ranges have a warming drawer instead of a storage drawer down below the oven. So just keep that in mind. The last recommendation is a garbage cabinet with pull-out cans. This gets all of your food waste and garbage out of sight and will also help contain any odors. Now one final suggestion is on the door hardware. I love the look of designer knobs in a kitchen but what I've noticed from the hundreds of kitchens I've seen near the end of their lifespan is a pattern of wear around any knobs. This is because when you grab a knob, you're almost always inadvertently touching the cabinet at the same time. Now over time, the constant oils from your hands, cooking oils and other substances can wear down a finish. And the constant cleaning around the knobs will also contribute to the wear. Pulls or handles like this, enable you to touch only the metal handle and avoid the wear on the doors and drawers. I wanted to talk a bit about working with an interior designer on your project. While I highly recommend consulting a designer to make sure that your expensive installation has the wow factor you've imagined, I'll offer a word of caution. First, let me say I've always used a designer when doing my own renovations. Their ability to visualize how tiny samples will look at scale and put together a cohesive palette is invaluable. But if you're on a tight budget, a designer can sometimes blow your budget into the stratosphere. When picking finishes, anything that is popular or fashion forward just tends to be expensive. And designers often want to make a statement with a design. So they won't necessarily choose finishes with price in mind first. 
They want to realize the vision they have for your space as their top priority. We've worked on projects with designers where we leave all the material and design elements up to the designer and the client. What we've noticed is that we could have built a similar project for significantly less and with a similar look, though not necessarily identical. The designer's projects definitely look stunning, but we are specialists in knowing the costs of a project and how to value engineer the design so that we cut costs and think budget first. You could find timeless materials for your project that will be as much as half the price of their designer equivalents without sacrificing quality. With designers charging around $150 an hour for their time, it's also great to make efficient use of that time. So another way to still get the benefit of a designer without having them as your personal shopper is to go out and visit suppliers first. Get a swath of samples you like and some Pinterest or house photos of the style you're after. Then you can bring the designer into the home and spend a couple hours refining your samples and putting together the final palette. We've seen designer invoices in the tens of thousands where a full suite of design help is required at every step in the process. But most of our clients who use our advice and they spend about $300 to $600 to get a designer's touch. The materials you select can have a major determination on the cost of your remodel. I've already explained how cabinet upcycling and finished choices can have a huge impact on budget. But there are also many other ways that you can save thousands on your remodel. Countertops are another big ticket item on your materials list. Many know the name brands like Decton, Caesarstone, and Silestone. These products are well known. The companies spend a lot on marketing to the public and are generally of very good quality. However, there are alternatives, alternative brands from Asia such as Casa Quartz, TCE, and Furstone that provide aesthetic and functional equivalents of the name brands, but are often at 50 to 60% of the price. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, I don't trust products manufactured in countries like China. I Trust me, I understand your concerns. But what I can say is that we have used these products in hundreds of homes without a single warranty issue. I've personally used these quartz products in three of my own home renovations, and I use their countertops daily, and I can say that there is no functional difference in the product. One additional concern might be that these products contain an epoxy resin to bind the quartz together, which all quartz manufacturers use. The concern is that it may be off-gassing VOCs or volatile organic compounds into your home, which could be a health concern. I personally had my home environmentally tested sometime after my own renovation, as our daughter has asthma, and we wanted to ensure that there were no airborne pollutants causing or affecting her condition. The environmental test came back all clear. And he was also pleasantly surprised that there were no traces of formaldehyde, which is often present in wood glues used in cabinetry. However, our custom millwork supplier uses formaldehyde-free glue in the vast majority of their products, and all products conform to the California CARB-2 standards for air quality. One more thing to mention in the material selection category are your plumbing fixtures. The way that most plumbing fixtures are sold mean that they have multiple levels of markup being paid by the various people in the supply chain. This is especially true for well-known name brand products. So you can often end up paying much more than the nuts and bolts that go into making the fixture. That's why we love brands like Pearl in Vancouver. They sell their own products that they manufacture so you don't pay the inflated prices of the name brands, but the quality and style of the sinks, faucets, etc. are great. I've looked at many hands growy fixtures and wondered how they are able to charge such a high price when many of the components are made of plastic and not even metal. The reality with manufacturing these days is that most of our products come from a single country or two or three different countries and are often built in the same factory, with some products being stamped with a name brand and other products rebranded and sold under a different name. With this being said, you do want to make sure that the brand you choose has a good track record of performance, as you don't want to worry about leaks or failing fixtures in the future. And some of the cheaper products on offer may carry this risk. If you're unsure I would just suggest saving your money on a sink 
but investing a little more on your faucet or shower fixtures if you're doing a bathroom renovation. This is because these components are regularly handling the flow of water and should there be an issue, can cause leaks and expensive plumbing bills. I don't think I've ever experienced a faulty sink. While faulty faucets or shower fixtures, we have definitely encountered. The type of company or contractor you choose for your project can have a major determination on where the final cost of your project ultimately lands. Contractors that offer cost plus renovations will typically give you an estimate or budget for the project and then perform the work. This is great if you want a very high attention to detail, the ability to make changes along the way, and are not concerned if your project goes over budget by 15% or more. Contractors in this business model don't have much of an incentive to get things completed expeditiously, nor do they bear any responsibility for the final cost. They're also not incentivized to hyper-focus on efficiency because if they find a more efficient way to perform your project, it doesn't benefit their bottom line. Now, this isn't to say that all contractors that work this way are entirely inefficient. But incentives are what drive us as human beings, so it's at least worth mentioning. One more point to be aware with cost plus contractors is that they don't actually just charge the 10, 15, or 20% markup that they put forward. No company could stay in business doing renovations at those numbers, unless the total project cost is extremely high. It's just a mathematical impossibility. There will be other marked up items along the way, such as labor that they provide. They may, for example, pay a laborer, say, $25 per hour, but then are doubling that rate and charging you $50 per hour and then adding their 10, 15, or 20% markup on top. This isn't to say that this practice is dubious, but it's great to get clarity on how you will be charged for your project. At the end of the day, these contractors need to make a certain total percentage of gross profit on your project in order to give great service and stay in business. Now on markups in general, you will often find that the smaller, more challenging the project, the higher the markup will be. A small reno might come with a markup of 20 to 25%, but a new home may be 10% or even slightly less. On the other side of the coin is a contractor that offers a fixed price model, such as us at Cabinet Painting Vancouver. We will nail down all of the selections and the scope of your project before we ever step foot in the home with our tools so that we can perform the work much faster as there will be little to no changes in the scope or materials and we're not left waiting for things to arrive. The main advantage here is that you will know exactly what your final invoice will be. If you're working with outside financing, have a set budget, or just like the peace of mind of knowing exactly what your project will cost, this can avoid a lot of scope creep, unexpected expenses, and inflating estimates. The contractors who offer a fixed price model often have a better sense of their numbers as they're incentivized to ensure they know exactly what your project will cost to execute, and if they're wrong, they take the hit. They should also be focused on efficiency because every time they find a way to more efficiently perform a task, it benefits their bottom line. Changes to scope is an important point to consider because this is where many renovation budgets get thrown out the window. If you're a mid-project and you decide to make a substantial change to the scope of work, many companies can and should charge a higher markup on the work involved in the change to the scope. This is for many reasons. First, they have to jettison the original plan and quickly work to obtain quotes to change the plans and then communicate changes to all affected parties. This also often extends the project timeline, which will affect their other or future clients. It also severely affects their schedule, which means they have to rebook their trades who may have been booked a month in advance for your project already, and now will have to hope that they can accommodate the new schedule. It may also include lengthy delays from suppliers or sourcing new materials, which drives up the cost of your project. The most cost-efficient project is always the one where the plans are thought out thoroughly before the project begins and is executed with little or no changes to the scope. While this might not always be possible, especially on very large projects, it's always good to keep in mind and try to minimize changes to the scope. In keeping with our theme of maintaining your kitchen layout, 
Another important point to consider is whether or not your plan will require major plumbing and electrical changes. To give an example, should you keep your sink and range in the same location for your project, you will often avoid permitting, costs associated with permits and plans, city inspectors, delays in waiting for your final approval, and major costs in rerouting these services. They also have many downstream consequences, such as additional drywall work, rerouting ventilation, or ripping out the ceiling or subfloor to get at those services. If you can avoid these major changes, the scope and cost of your project will be significantly decreased, as will the amount of time required to complete it. In addition to this, the less you open up in your home, the less chance there is that you will discover something else that now needs to be upgraded to meet the current code. So keeping the drywall on the walls and the electrical and plumbing services in place whenever possible is going to do wonders to keep the costs down. Now this point goes along with the previous point I made. By keeping your scope simplified, your walls, plumbing, and electrical in their current state or location, you avoid opening up a proverbial can of worms as you start digging behind the walls of your home. Companies can only quote or budget for items that are visible or apparent at the time of quoting. So there may very well be instances where you find something that needs to be remedied once you begin demolition on walls, floors, etc. And those items could very well eat up a significant percentage of the budget for your project. You just don't know until you find out the hard way. Additionally, these unforeseen surprises will often stop or stall progress on your projects while they are priced out, approved, and remedied, which brings additional cost and time delays. In a more serious case, you may have to rework your entire renovation scope should these unforeseen costs eat up a substantial portion of your budget, and you no longer have the funds to do what you'd originally planned. Now, contrary to what some people may think, not all specialty trades, such as tile installers or painters, provide identical products or services. Every general contractor has worked with a multitude of trades for every, any given specialty. They will have experienced how each of these companies operate, the quality they deliver, how reliable they are, how reliable their cost estimates are, and how they resolve issues should they come up. So it's great to think about what qualities you would like from each trade you will employ, as giving your contractor insight on what is most important to you is valuable information for your contractor. If you are someone with a very high attention to detail and you have a lot of tile work in your project, you may wanna ask that he uses a tile installer that is a bit more expensive, but known for doing very good and detailed work and who also does not hesitate to return to fix deficiencies for persnickety clients. The opposite can also be true if something is not of particular importance to you. To use the example of countertop fabricators and installers, you could opt to go with a lower priced option if your project does not require a high degree of precision or detail and you will sleep just fine at night if your countertops are not perfectly scribed to your walls and things are a little bit out of perfect alignment by a quarter inch here or there. Another example is with interior paint. A cheap and cheerful painter might be fine for some people who don't notice small details in their paint in their daily life. But if wavy cut lines, poorly prepared walls, or a sloppy brush finish on your trim will drive you crazy, you may want to opt for a higher priced professional who will take the time and have the skill to complete things in more granular detail. It's important to remember that quality in renovations is not just a function of the skill of the tradesperson. It's more importantly a function of how much time that tradesperson typically invests to please their average client. Some people work exclusively on high-end homes for highly detailed clients, while some may make their living doing cheap and cheerful work for less demanding clients. Either person likely knows how to do the job of the other but it may not be the way they typically operate. So it's great to get clarity on the types of trades and their price points for your project. The final point I'm gonna make is an important one, and that is how long your renovation ultimately takes. One of the elements we always focus on is getting clients back in their functioning spaces as soon as possible. This is because there are a lot of costs to those renovations that run on many months past their due date. If the kitchen or bathrooms in your home are out of service, 
that means you may be eating meals out, staying outside of the home, having storage units paid for, or you may be unable to work from home. All of these things add to the time, cost, and stress factors in your renovation. Now, renovations are notorious for taking longer than anticipated, and for good reason. There are unforeseen circumstances that pop up, many supplier and trade schedules to juggle, and additions or changes to the original scope of work to consider. At Cabinet Painting Vancouver, we set aggressive targets for kitchen and bathroom remodels because we realize how important this is for the client. But yes, even we sometimes miss our mark as construction is full of surprises. But by getting our clients back into a functioning kitchen or bathroom as soon as possible and making that one of our stated missions keeps our feet to the fire and keeps us improving our processes. And I'm proud to say that we hit our mark in over 90% of our projects so our clients can be using their kitchen or bathroom much sooner than they would if they had chosen another company. So that concludes this video on some of the major factors that can affect the cost of your renovation. I hope this gives you some insight so you can better plan for your upcoming remodel. Thanks again for watching, and if you'd like to inquire about your own project, just book a consultation through our website.